All right, guys, welcome to our extra credit lesson number three. We're going to talk about graphing circles and finding area that involves circles today. Uh, we're going to look at two different forms for the equation of a circle, the one that we're used to already, and then a slightly different looking one that's like that. And then we're going to be using that stuff to find some areas. So let's begin. So how do you graph a circle in this form? Well, we just talked about that in our very last unit of the year. The center is the h and the k. Remember to change the signs. The radius is going to be the square root of whatever number is over here. You plot your center point, and then you use your radius to find four points around the center. Connect your dots, and you're good to go. Um, the area of a circle is pi r squared. So um, whatever your radius is, take the square root of that, right? That number there, and then it gives you your radius. Plug it in here, and you've got the area of your circle. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example here. We want to graph this, and we want to find its area. Notice that this one is missing the h number. Um, that means it's 0. So we have 0, and the k number is negative 4. Remember, do opposite signs. The radius will be the square root of this number, which is 3. So I've got my center, and I've got my radius. We're ready to graph it. 0, negative 4 would be down here. My radius is 3. So we're going to go up 3, right 3, left 3, down 3, and we're going to connect our dots. So that's the first part they've asked me to do is to graph the circle. That's done. Now I want to find the area of the circle. The area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. My radius is 3. So the area is going to be 9 pi. Okay? Area, just in case you guys forgot, is a measurement that tells you how much is inside of a shape. Okay? All right. Let's go ahead and move on to our student practice here. So go ahead and pause the video here. Give this one a try. When you unpause it, I'll have the solution up for you. All right. So there's the graph on the left, and there's the area in the box at the right. Let's go ahead and move along here to another form of the circle. So I shared this with you guys a second ago. Let's go ahead and start by writing this out again. Now, I'm going to show you guys another form of this circle. The first thing we're going to do is I want to get, my, my goal is I want to get the Y by itself. I want to get this letter here by itself. So the first step in that process is to subtract this big chunk here on both sides. So now this whole thing is gone, and I'm left with this. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a square root on both sides. That way this square root will cancel out that two there, and I'll be left with y minus k. Now we have to remember something. When you solve by taking a square root, you get a plus and you get a minus. And we'll talk about what that means in just a moment. Uh, but for now, the next step to get the y by itself is simply to add the k on both sides. Notice the k is not going to go under the square root. Everything else is under the square root, but not the k. So we're going to be looking at this form here. That is the same equation. I just moved things around. So it's still the equation of a circle. But, um, and the h, still rep the h and the k still represent the uh, center. And the square root of the r squared there, that still represents the radius. Um, so it's just stuff's been moved around. But I want to talk to you guys specifically about what the positive and the negative mean here. Because they, what they mean is they mean different parts of the circle. Um, the positive refers to the top half of the circle. So in other words, that much of it. Whereas... The y value, I'm sorry, the, the yellow part down there refers to the bottom half. 
and when you put them together, you get a full circle. Okay, so square roots, if they're positive, will give you the top half, and the negative will give you the bottom half. All right, now we're going to do something kind of similar here. On this one, I got the y by itself. We can actually repeat this process though, and instead of getting the y by itself, we can get the x by itself. The steps are pretty much the same. The only difference is this time we're going to start by moving the y minus k over to the other side. Let me back up a little bit. So this goes away. Next, we square root both sides. These cancel. Don't forget your plus and minus. So now we have x minus h is equal to the square root of r squared minus y minus k squared. And then finally, we add the h. And once again, it's really just the same equation. It's just written differently. So we have the same equation being written in three different ways. Um, and there's a reason for that. Um, in calculus, we do like to see the, them written in different ways for different purposes. Okay, so there's that. Now let's talk about what this one means. For this particular situation, since it's x equals instead of y equals, instead of the top half and the bottom half, what it is is the right half and the left half. So the positive represents the right half of the circle, whereas the negative represents the left half of the circle. Okay? Either way, you still get the same circle, it's just that the positive and the negative represent different halves of the circle. So, with that being said, now we've got a nice little summary here. You could either have the y by itself, or you could have the x by itself. If it's the y by itself, then the positive means the top half of the circle. The negative represents the bottom half of the circle. If you get the one with the x by itself, the positive represents the right half. The negative represents the left half. Once again, if you're missing either the h or a k, they are equal to 0. And now this is kind of an important little piece of information. Since we are talking about half circles, like this is really only a half of a circle, if you want to find the area of a half circle, what you do is you do the normal area of a circle, pi r squared, and you divide it by 2 because you're talking about a half circle. A half circle is also referred to as a semicircle. Okay? So, that being said, let's jump into example 2 here. All right. So, this is a y equals negative square root r squared minus x minus h squared and bar went too far there minus or sorry plus k okay so first of all let's identify our center the center of my circle is going to be the number next to the this being subtracted from x so what's being subtracted from x? Well, that would be a negative 4. You do the opposite sign. Next, over here, we're looking for the number that's being added to the square root. In this case, we're adding a negative 4. So that one we don't do an opposite sign because when it got moved over to the other side, the sign switched. So we don't do an opposite sign for the k, but we do keep doing the opposite sign for the h when it's in this form. Okay. Um, next, we want to identify our radius. The radius can be found by taking the square root of that number. So the square root of 1 is 1. Now we're ready to graph it. My center is left 4 and down 4. And my radius is 1. So up 1, left, right, and down 1. Now, I am going to draw my circle, but I'm going to change something in just a moment. And here's why. Because whenever your circle is in this form, You only get a half circle. Now, since it's y equals, it's either the top half or the bottom half. 
And since it's a negative, it's only going to be the bottom half. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get rid of that dot there, and I'm just going to draw a half of a circle there. So there's my half circle. Now this line isn't really a part of the graph, so you don't need to have that there, but that's really what the graph looks like. Just looks kind of like a short little smiley face. All right. Now they want us to find the area also of these things. So graph it and find the area. So area is pi r squared, right? But it's a half a circle, so it's pi r squared divided by 2. My radius is 1. So I end up with a equals pi over 2 for the area of that semicircle. OK? Let's do another one here. This one is in the form of x equals a positive square root r squared and then y minus k squared, and then plus h would be over here. So what would my center be? Well, over here, the h um, gives us our x value, and here the k gives us our y value. And remember, the one out here, we don't change the sign, but the one that's in here, we do change the sign because it has the negative next to it. All right. So in this case here, um, you could think of this as y minus 0 squared plus 0, because anytime you're missing either the h or the k, they are 0. So in this case, they're both zeros, so it doesn't really matter that, about the changing of the signs. Um, next, we have our radius to find. The square root of 4 is 2. So I'm going to graph this. Center is 0. We're going up 2, right 2, left 2, and down 2. Now, a full circle would look like this, but we have to remember, this is actually going to be a half a circle. So what half is it? Well, it's x equals, which means we're looking at a right half or a left half, and it's a positive. Therefore, it must be a right half of the circle, so it looks like this. And what we want to find is we want to find the area of that. So area of a half circle is pi r squared over 2. My radius is 2, so pi times 4 over 2, and that can be reduced even further to be just 2 pi. And there's the area of that semicircle. All right, so we'll toss a couple of these your way. Why don't you guys give these ones a try, graph them, and find the area of each semicircle. And when you're all done, unpause the video, and you'll see the answers up for you. All right, guys, so here is number one. The center is at uh, 0, negative 1, and the radius is 3, and it's a left half of the circle. The area would be pi r squared over 2, which is 9 pi over 2 if you simplify it. Number 2, the center is at 0, 2, and the, uh, it's the top half of a circle and the radius is 4, and so the area would be 8 pi. All right, so for example 3, we're just going to be finding areas of various um, uh, shapes uh, that, in, that uses circles a little bit. Now, in all the problems, we're going to be trying to find the area of the blue region, okay? So as you guys can see, to find the area of the blue region, We're going to have to find the area of the entire square first. And then we're going to subtract out of it the area of the circle. And that will help us find the area of the blue region. Okay, so that's kind of our strategy there for finding this one. All right, so now how do you find the area of a square? Well, the area of a square is going to be the base length times the height. Now, here I'm telling you that the radius of the circle is 3. Now, if you could just imagine taking this line here and carrying it down here, then that's half of the bottom. And so the side length of the square then 
is going to be 3 here and 3 here, which is a total of 6. And for a square, the, the base and height are the same, so this is also 6. So the area of the square is base times height. Matter of fact, if you didn't know that, sometimes I find people a little bit rusty on their area formulas. We'll write it down here. Base times height. So that would be 6 times 6, which is 36. So now we want to subtract from that the area of the circle. Now you guys know the area of the circle is pi r squared. And we can see from the picture there that the radius is 3. So this is going to be 9 pi. And we could just leave our answer like that. Um, we could technically calculate what 9 times pi is and actually subtract it from 36 and get a regular number here as an answer. But it's not uncommon to just leave your answer like this. So that would be the area of the blue region there. Let's take a look at another. All right, so here's our second problem. Now for this one, I want to find the area of the blue region once again. And as you guys can see, that's going to be the area of the semicircle on the top there, added to the area of the rectangle right underneath of it. So if we put those two areas together, that will give me the area of the blue region. Okay, so now we know that the area of a, of a semicircle is pi times the radius squared, but cut in half because it's only a half circle. So that would be the area of this semicircle up here. Now, what is the radius? It's not 10. 10 is the distance all the way across. The radius is the distance that only goes halfway across, so from here to here. So if the whole length is 10, then half that length must be 5. Okay, And so the radius is 5. So the area of the semicircle then will be 25 pi over 2. Plus, now we want to do the area of the rectangle. The area of a rectangle is base times height. Once again, just like a square, it would seem that the base is 10 and the height is 8. So that would be 8 times 10, which is 80. And once again, we can just leave our answer like that. That's good enough. <clears throat> Let's take a look at another example. So once again, we want to find the area of the blue region. Now, I'm going to draw a dotted line here along the bottom just so you guys can kind of see it. We're, we're seeing two shapes here. We have a rectangle, and then we have a semicircle. So what we're going to do to find the area of the blue region, we're going to find the total area of the rectangle and we're going to subtract from it the area of the semicircle and what's left will just be these blue areas here of the rectangle. That's, that's what would be left of the rectangle and that's the area that I want to find there. So let's go ahead and do that. So how do we find the area of a rectangle? Well we've already said it's base times height, right? Now the height of this rectangle is 4. What's the base? Well, since this is a circle, this length has to be equal to this length and this length. So because on a circle, the radius is always the same. So the height has to be the same as the length there. So what we can include from that is that if this is 4, then from here to here is 4, and so is this because of symmetry. And so the total base length is 8. So the base is 8 long, and so that would be 32. Now we want to subtract from that the area of the semicircle, which you guys know is pi r squared over 2. And the radius of this semicircle is half of that bottom line there, so the radius would be 4 once again. So that's 4 squared pi over 2. 16 over 2 would be 8 pi. And so that would be the area of the blue region there, 32 minus 8 pi. All right, let's take a look at one more. So before we begin this last one, I want to talk to you guys about how to find the area of a quarter circle. So you guys already know that the area of a circle is pi r squared, right? You know that the area of a half a circle is pi r squared over 2. Well, a quarter of a circle would be pi r squared 
over 4. Okay, so that's going to be helpful to know. You don't need to write these things here, but you should write this one because that's new. This is what we call a quarter circle. So you might want to add that somewhere on your paper because that's a nice little reference to have for the problem that's coming up. All right, so now we want to find this area of the blue region. Now I'm going to think of this as a square here. And so what I'm going to do is to find the area of the blue region. I'm going to find the area of this square. And I'm going to subtract from it a quarter circle. So if I take all of this away from the circle or the square, what's left would be the blue region. Okay, so I'm going to subtract a quarter circle. All right, so as you guys can kind of tell from the picture here, the, the square has the same base and height. So the area of a square is base times height. The height is 2, which means that the base also has to be 2 on a square, minus the area of the quarter circle. That would be pi r squared over 4. And the radius of our circle here is 2 also. So you can imagine this is like the center of the circle. If you guys imagine the whole circle being there, that's like the center, and this is the radius. So the radius is 2 also. Okay, so we have 4 minus... And this is going to be 4 over 4, which is just 1, so we're left with just pi. So it's 4 minus pi would be the area of the blue region there. All right, and so that's finding area of various geometric shapes that involve circles. Um, these are some skills that can come in handy as a, a, a tool in calculus next year. Um, so let's have you guys do one of these. All right. So let me put some numbers on these. All right, guys. So there you go. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can find the areas of these two shapes. And when you unpause it, I will have the solutions up for you. All right, guys. So here's the two answers in boxes here. So for the top one up here, you have a semicircle, a rectangle, and then another semicircle. Each semicircle is pi r squared over 2. Since the total length here is 8, the radius would be half of that, which is 4. So the area of the semicircle would be pi 4 squared over 2, which is 8 pi. The other one's the same as that. The two semicircles are identical. In the middle, the rectangle is base times height, so that would be 10 and 8. So that's 80. And then putting the 8 pi's together, you get 16 pi. So you have 16 pi plus 80 is the final answer there. For this other one here, you have to kind of imagine there being a square around these two little ramp looking things and if the total length is 20 that means each of these are 10 and since this is a quarter circle here the radius is going to be the same here and here so both of these are 10. Now what I did on this problem was I just found the area of one of these little ramp shapes here and then I doubled it. So I have two times the area of one of those little ramps. Um, so the, the square is going to be base times height, which is 10 times 10. The quarter circle has a radius of 10. So that would be pi 10 squared over 4, since it's a quarter circle. So that's 100 minus 25 pi. And then since there's two of these little ramps, one on the right and one on the left, putting those together, you could just double it, and you get 200 minus 50 pi. And that's that. All right, so that'll do it for today. And we'll put that stuff to practice in class next time. See ya.